All right. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Petri Latvarasku. I am responsible for marketing activities here at Kuha. And uh, I welcome you to the Kuha Sono 2 webinar. So welcome. Uh, during the webinar, you have the possibility of sending us questions via two methods. Firstly, you can send an email to the address you see on, on the screen here, webinar at kuha.com, or you can use the YouTube live chat also to send questions. And uh, the presentation that I am going to keep on Zono 2 is going to take approximately 30 minutes, and after that presentation, we'll go through all the questions that we have received from you. So what do we have? What's the content of this presentation? I'll first tell you a little bit about Kuha, what it is, what we do. Then the main part of the presentation is going to be Kuha Sono 2. And uh, what is Kuha Sono 2? What makes it different? Uh, then we'll go through the different features that we have in Kuha Sono 2. Uh, I'll go through the benefits to the user and also where you can use Kuha Sono 2. And at the end of this presentation, as I said, there will be a possibility for you to send questions. You can send the questions during the presentation when they pop up in your mind. And we'll go through the questions and we'll answer those questions at the end of the presentation in about 30 minutes. All right. So what is, what is Kuha? You probably know what Kuha is. So we are a company who is manufacturing and designing computer access products. Our most known product is the Kuha Sono gyroscopic wireless head mouse. We have been selling it for almost 10 years now. And also we manufacture different wearing accessories, mostly for Kuha Sono and Sono 2. We also manufacture different switches and software, different types of software. Uh, our customers are located in all parts of the world. They are in Europe, in many countries in Europe. They are in America, in Asia, in Australia, and uh, in Africa also. So pretty much we are selling our products all over the world. Uh, we are very, let's say, proud that our deliveries are fast to anywhere in the, in the world. And, and we always try to answer the questions that we receive from our customers in 24 hours. So we are happy that we, we can usually manage this, this uh, promise that we give to our customers. All right, uh, let's go to the Kuha Sono 2 mouse. So just quickly, what is Kuha Sono 2? Well, it's an improved version of the Kuha Sono mouse. And uh, it has all the familiar features that you know from Kuha Sono, plus a bunch of new features which have been requested by the users. So we listen to our customers and, and these features that we have added to Kuha Sono 2 are the ones that are most requested by our users. So we decided to include them in the new version Kuha Sono 2. And uh, Kuha Sono 2, as is Kuha Sono, it's a hands-free wireless USB head mouse and uh, its user can perform all the regular mouse functions even if they cannot use their hands. So you can do anything that you can do with a very accurate table mouse with Kuha Sono 2, but you can do it without doing anything with your hands. It's compatible with all the modern USB operated devices like computers, tablets, smartphones. More on, more on that later. later. Uh, at this point, I think I will go through the Kuha Zono 2 sales box. So I will go through the contents of the Kuha Zono 2 sales box so you can see yourself what is, what is included and I will explain what the different, different parts are doing. So this is the Kuha Zono 2 sales box. And well, I will place this, I know that it is not really visible when I place it on the table, but I will just pick things from this box one by one and I will show them on, in front of your, the camera so that you can, you can see what's inside. So the first part, the Kuha Sono mouse, this is the part that is usually worn and moved by head movements. Of course, it can also be moved by other parts of the body. 
but this is basically the very same size box and it looks very identical to Kuhasono. And the difference that you can see here is that the front cover is black. So with Kuhasono, this is kind of darker gray area, this, this front plate here. And that is how you, you can see that this is a Kuhasono 2. It's completely black. The way it is the same as, as with Kuhasono. Then the USB receiver, this is the part that is connected to the mobile device, computer, whichever device you want to, want to use, this is connected to the USB port of that device. And uh, it's a plug and play device, you connect it to the device and it starts working immediately. Uh, additionally, for Kuhasono 2, we have added the head mount kit. So the head mount kit is the wearing accessory which contains this part, which is the neck band. And then also it con contains this clip part here, which I have actually already connected to the bottom side of the Kuhasono 2. So this is the light eyeglass clip. So the head mount kit consists of these two parts. And together this gives the user the possibility to wear the device on, on, on the head. And basically it is connected to the neck band like this. We, we just push it here and there it is. And then you, you can wear this. We also have, let's take this one. We have the charging cable, USB charging cable. The USB type A connector is connected to any computer's USB port for charging, or you can also connect it directly to any, any USB charger and the other end is connected to the Zono when, when it is charged. Uh, then we have the mouse button cable or the switch cable. So this other part is connected to the Zono side and the other end has a standard 3.5 millimeter connector which gives you the possibility of connecting any any typical assistive technology switches to this device. So they more or less all have the standard 3.5 millimeter connector. So you can use different types of switches here. Then there is also a dual switch connector. So if you want to connect two different switches to the Zono, for example, then you would just connect this. This is the 3.5 millimeter connector. You would just plug it in here and then you have two different connectors here. So the silver one is for the left click and the gold one is for the right click. And this way you would be able to connect two different switches to uh, the Sono side. This can also be connected directly to the USB receiver so you can connect, connect buttons or switches additional USB receiver. More, more on that later. Uh, then we have a spare, spare clip part in case you need it. And then there is a pile of paper here. It has the Kuhasono 2 user manual, contains instructions, instructions on how to operate Kuhasono 2. We have the setup instructions for the Kuhasono 2 software. So the software is downloadable from Kuha web pages and it can be configured. I mean, it doesn't need to be configured. The default settings are, are usually working pretty well, but it can be tailor-made to suit specific users if they want to do configurations. But I will show you later what kind of configurations are possible. Then we have the Kuha Dwell Quick Guide. So Kuha Dwell is a dwell clicking software that comes with the Kuhasono 2. And uh, this is the quick guide for that. So if you don't need or can't use uh, physical switches, then you can use the Kuha 12, which is a very complete software included. Uh, there is also the license code for the software. On this paper, the, the license code is given. There is a warranty card in, in case you need it. And also a small piece of re reminder to tell us your opinion. So like the Kuhasono 2 features when 
customers give us feedback, we know what is needed and we try to implement the most requested features also in the future. So please give us feedback. All right, so let's see what's, what should be next. That was more or less what is inside the sales box. And uh, at this point, I think I will connect uh, the mouse to my computer. So I don't know, you probably cannot see it, but I have my laptop in front of me and my laptop is connected to this screen that you see on, on my side. And what I see on my screen is exactly identical to what is seen, seen here. So whatever I am doing with my Puhasono 2 mouse, you will be able to see what is, what is happening. So I will be using it so that uh, I will connect two different switches to the USB receiver. I could quite as well connect it to the Puhasono, but because uh, of my setup here, it is rather convenient for me to use the switches which are located on the table. So I will just connect them to the USB receiver. So I connect the dual button here and then I will connect to the silver connector the left mouse button like this and to the gold connector the right mouse button like this. And then I will just connect it to my computer's USB port. Okay, you could probably hear, the sound was not very, very loud, but you could probably hear that my computer immediately recognized the USB receiver and it doesn't require any driver installation, it is ready, ready to be used now. And then on my head I will be wearing the Puhasono with the head mount kit and I will turn it on and you can immediately see that the cursor is is moving, so when I move my head left and right, the cursor moves left and right. When I move my head up and down, the cursor moves up and down. You can see that it's a very accurate mouse. Basically, I can pinpoint any, any single pixel on the screen if I so choose. It's a very accurate device and completely operated with my head movements in this case. And uh, as I mentioned, it's a plug-and-play device. No drivers were necessary or installed on my computer. It works in the, exactly the same manner on all the, all the different devices. So you don't need to install any drivers or any software if you don't want to. If you are using it on different operating systems, it just you plug this device in and it just works. Uh, the biggest new feature of Kuhasono 2 mouse is the gestures. And uh, gestures are predefined motion patterns. Okay, sounds maybe a little bit complicated, but it's actually pretty simple. So it means that when I move my head in a certain manner, it activates certain functions that are built into the mouse. And what the functions that we have here is pause, scrolling, and uh, centering. And I will go through these in detail. So pausing is something that basically stops the cursor from moving even if I am moving my head. So it's a very useful feature in such cases. For example, if you want to watch a video or like, like I am showing here a presentation and my cursor is moving when I'm speaking and it's kind of moving and I, I might not want it, it to move, but if I'm, for example, watching a YouTube video and uh, I have a full screen mode, I would probably not want to see the video control panel pop up every single time when I move my head. So I would like to pause it. How you activate the pause is that you first stay still for one second and then you make twice the horizontal move, either left, right, left, right, or right, left, right, left. So how it works in practice is that I will stay still for a second, like this. Then I move left, right, left, right, and you notice that the cursor paused. So it is not, now not following my head movements at all at the moment. So it stays like this, paused, until I unpause it. And unpausing is done by either, if I have a physical switch, if I would activate the switch, it would unpause it, 
Or the other alternative is that I would just move my head once left, right, or right, left. So if I would just stay here still for a second like this, and then I move my head left, right, the cursor starts moving again. And uh, that's basically what, what pausing is doing. Uh, then scrolling is perhaps a little bit more complex in, in terms of, of what it does. So scrolling is something that, let me just open here a window which is like here. I have opened the Kuhasono 2 page from kuha.com. So as you can see, the, this is a kind of long page which lots of, with lots of information. And uh, reading it, if you cannot click, might be kind of slow. I mean, you, so certainly you can do scrolling with different 12-clicking uh, software. If you have a physical switch, you can also do that. But in case you don't have those or you just want to do it in a very easy manner, this is how you would do it. You would activate the scroll feature. And when, once it is activated, you will see that the cursor is making a small circular movement. So that indicates that this scrolling mode is active or going active. And after the circular movement, you have two to three seconds time to go to the window that you want to scroll. And then the cursor stops there. And after that, with your head movements, you can just scroll the window up, on, up and down. And this uh, feature is activated by moving the cursor up, down, up, down, or vertically twice, or you can also do it first down, up, down, up. So first stay still for a second, like this. And then I go up, down, up, down. And you can see the circular movement. And now I'm positioning the mouse inside the browser. And now when I nod my head downwards, it scrolls, when I lift it up, it scrolls up. And basically, if I want to read this, okay, I read it, and then I complete my reading, I want to go a bit down, I can do that. And it works on all windows, this is just the browser window that I'm demonstrating, but any window that requires scrolling will work like this. And then when you want to exit this mode, you will just make make the left-right movement and it will exit the mode and now the cursor is just following the mouse like, like normal. Uh, then the third feature or third gesture that we have here is the centering. So centering basically takes your cursor to the middle of the screen or the middle area of the screen depending on the device. Uh, basically you activate it by first moving horizontally twice and then vertically twice. And then the cursor basically jumps to the center of the screen. And uh, this is how it works. Stay idle for a second. Then I go left, right, up, down. Okay, I didn't stay still for a second. Let's try again. And the cursor jumped to the center of the screen. And uh, after the centering of the cursor, it stays still for about two seconds during the time you have the possibility of moving your head to the neutral or center position yourself. So that way you can, you can put the cursor in a, in a very nice and easy to use position. So not all the people use this because centering the cursor can also be achieved by kind of pushing like here, if I push kind of over the side, the cursor still remains visible, but it is not actually moving there. And that way it is also relatively straightforward to center the cursor. But in case the user has the difficulty of doing this, this is actually a very requested feature. So it was implemented here because we know that it is much used by our, our, our users. So these are the... Uh, Kuhasono two gestures that that are working on all the operating systems and uh, they are just extremely easy to activate and use and they, they just work and you don't need any software for them to work. Uh, 
The Quadwell software that I mentioned earlier, I'm not going to go through that because it's a very com com complete application and it's a virtual mouse software or the dual clicking software that comes with the Kuha Sono. It works on Windows 10. And uh, this is something that uh, basically gives the user the possibility to do different types of clicks, left clicks, right clicks, double clicks, uh, choosing text like copy, paste, doing basically all the things that people are using different dual clicking software. So it, it comes here. But because we are going to have a separate webinar regarding Kuha 12, I'm not going to go through the details here because, it, as I said, it's a very complete software and it has numerous features and it will, alone will take one, one webinar. Uh, the Kuha Sono tool supports all different types of clicking mechanisms. So, dual clicking, you can use the Kuha 12 so software or you can also use other software. If you, for example, have a license for any other dual clicking software, feel free to use it. They all work with Kuha Sono. But personally, I would, I would say that in many cases, it definitely makes sense for the user to try a physical switch because this is, the Kuha Sono 2 is compatible with all different physical switches that have the 3.5 millimeter connector. It is like different puff switches, button switches, white switches, touch switches, any kind of switches that the user wants to use. And we have, they, they just automatically work with the Kuha Sono 2 because they are fully compatible with this device. So it gives actually quite a bit of uh, speed when using your device, when you are using physical buttons. For example, the puff switches that we manufacture and, and, and sell, they are extremely fast to use with uh, Kuha Sono. Many of our customers do use those devices and they are very happy with, with the speed of their computer. Uh, we also have multiple wearing options for head and limb limb attachments. So most of our users we know use them with their head movements and we have different accessories for, for the head like the one that comes with the Kuha Sono 2 built-in but we also have different accessories if you want to wear it off your head or if you want to wear it on your eyeglasses, they are possible. And uh, basically, depending on, on how the customer, I mean, if the customer, for example, is leaning on a, on a neck wrist or a pillow, then probably this one that I'm at the moment using, which is there is this band behind my neck, this probably would not be optimal. But in that case, you would just choose a wearing accessory which goes above your head and that way you could also lean on a pillow or, or a headrest while using it. We have basically different wearing accessories for all the situations and also if you want to use, I mean if you have movement, let's say that your hand is amputated, you could also attach the Kuha Sono 2 mouse to your hand using the Velcro strap and the universal clip and that way you could still utilize your, your amputated hand to operate the mouse, that would also be a very, very fast and, and kind of convenient option to use it. So it can be used with any body part that the user can and can control. Uh, this is a lightweight device. The weight is the same as with the Kuha Sono, so 23 grams still. And uh, it has a battery life which is doubled to the Kuha Sono when compared to Kuha Sono. So this is lasting about 60 hours of active usage time. And to put it into perspective, 60 hours, if you use it two to three hours per day, then you could use this for about three weeks without charging it in between. So a rather long time. And even if you are using it like all the time when you are awake, it would still last many, many days, like probably about a week and uh, then you could recharge it. You can recharge it every, every day if you like, no harm, harm to the device by doing that, but you don't have to. So it, the battery life is, is very, very long here. And because it has a rechargeable battery, you don't really have to replace it. Replace it. Uh, 
you probably noticed that I am sitting in front of my computer, but I would not have to do that. So if I move myself away from my computer, you can see that I can still perfectly control my, my cursor, which is moving exactly where I want. So this gives me or the user a complete freedom to position him or herself to wherever necessary. For example, if like, like my computer is now connected to this big screen TV here on my side. I mean, if the situation is similar in, in my home, I could basically sit in a wheelchair and I could drive to different places in the room and I could completely and perfectly use my computer that way from where whichever position I would choose to go. And because the wireless range for Kuhasono is uh, 10 meters, that would give me the really real possibility of moving freely around the room. And it doesn't really take interference from sunlight like some, some other devices. Uh, at this point, perhaps I will go through the setup procedure that we have. So I, I'll just show you what you can configure on the mouse. So I have the Kuhasono 2 settings application installed here. And uh, I'll just move the app here so that you can all see it. On the first speed tab here, we have the same settings as with Kuhason also. Different horizontal and vertical speed settings and also the tremor filter. We made the tremor filter setting actually a little, little easier. So we removed certain advanced options here, but you can still choose the strength of the tremor filter. So it removes certain unwanted movements from, from the cursor movement. The most of the features are located on the mouse actions tab, the new features. And here you can see we have the USB receiver switch configuration. This refers to those switches that are connected to the USB receiver. And then there is also the Zono switch configuration. So this setting applies to those switches which have been connected to the Zono directly with the cable that I showed you, showed you earlier. And uh, in practice, this means that you can connect four different and simultaneous switches to the Kuhasono 2. And you can, all, you can configure all the switches to do different things. So by default there are, I mean, the left click is doing the left click and the right click is doing the right click. But in this case, if I want to change, for example, the right mouse button here, I could choose that it does the right click, it can do the pausing of the cursor, or it can center the cursor, or I can activate a double click by doing that, or I can scroll using that, or I can turn on or off the auto click feature. So I'll just show you the pausing here. And I connected, this is the switch that I have connected to the right mouse button on the USB receiver. Now, now when I click this, you can see that the cursor stops. When I click it again, it starts moving. When I click it again, it stops and, and so on. And uh, this, is, this could be, for example, used by a person who can, for example, if this was connected Let's say here, I could probably touch it with my, my elbow or my shoulder, depending. It can be connected and, of course, because we can connect all types of switches here, it could be a buff switch or any other type of switch as well. Cursor centering would just do the cursor centering, so when I click it, it immediately moves the cursor to the center of the screen and also the double left click scroll and auto click are doing exactly exactly what it says i'll just leave the pausing of the cursor here so it is easier for me to pause the cursor for the zono side switches here it's also possible to configure them with the exception that on the zono side the first button or the left side button always does the left click, so because that is really needed for a mouse. And then, then the right side can be configured exactly with the same features as, as I showed on the other one. So 
I could have the, for example, the cursor pausing connected to the Sonoside button, but as I said, four different buttons can, can be configured here or switches. Uh, then there is a general feature. You can basically also turn off the gestures. They are on by default, but if you fall, if you know that you are not using them, you can turn them also off. Basically, that way you would prevent accidental accidental activation of those uh, gesture functions. Mouse buttons have the known old, old features. We can have the double click assistant. It is turned on by default, which what it does is that it stops the cursor movement after the first click for the period of time specified here with this slider. And it makes simply double clicking easier because double clicking on different operating systems typically requires that the cursor is not moving between those clicks. And it is sometimes rather difficult to do two clicks without moving the mouse at all. I, I notice this myself when I when I do, but this double click assistant is extremely useful if you if because the cursor stops after the first click for for a while, and then there is the built-in auto click. It is off by default. That's basically the settings that you can do with Kuhasan or two, and uh, just shortly the benefits to the user for the Kuhasan or two is that. It is an extremely intuitive way to control your co computer or mobile device. So your intuitive head movements are translated into the cursor movement on screen. And it is just, it just takes a couple of seconds before people understand how this, this works. We have seen it so many times. You can do whatever you do with a good table mouse with the Kuha Zono, including accuracy, kind of button switches, everything. They can be done with Kuhasono. So it's, it can be fully used to replace another other type of mouse, and you can do all kinds of things with it. It's a plug and play device, no drivers needed. You can configure the features as I showed, you don't have to. So what you see here is I'm using the default settings, and there is really no need to change these for most of the people, but it can be done if, if necessary. So it can be tailored. And uh, in the package, you get the full, full working mouse, including the necessary activities. And also, we have plenty of different accessories that you, the user can still customize it to fit even, even better, if so required. Okay, so where can you use the Kuhasono tool? You can use it in your home, you can use it in the office. We have customers who are able to still work because they are using Kuhasono 2. And uh, you can use this home basically to control any of those devices that you have. You can have your computer. My computer here is Windows 10. You can use any other computer. You can use a Mac, you can use a Chromebook computer, you can use an iPad, you can use an iPhone, you can use, use Android tablets or smartphones, basically any device that supports USB mice, which are nowadays, almost all devices support USB mice. Plug and play on all the operating systems. And uh, maybe at this point, I will just show this adapter. This is just one adapter that we provide. So we have adapters for all the different USB port types and operating systems. And uh, because uh, the Kuha Zono 2, it has a standard USB type A port like you see here on the left. Uh, this is something that, that you can just use to connect the Zono here. And then, well, this is a USB type C adapter. There is also an additional USB type C adapter, so you can connect the charger here and at the same time when you are using the Kuhasono 2 here. So you can leave it permanently connected to, to your, your computer and uh, you don't really ever need to disconnect those cables. So. And the, we have the adapters, lighting adapters for older iPads and we have uh, OTG adapters for, for micro USB. There are basically adapters for all the operating systems. So you don't have to worry about that. I only have one USB port on my 
my mobile device. That's not a problem because there are adapters for all those, all those available. Uh, just a reminder for you, the kuha.com web pages, it, it contains a lot of information on Kuha products. So we have the solutions menu here, which tells you how Kuha Zono and Zono 2 work on different operating systems. Then we have uh, detailed information on Kuha products here, including the Kuha Zono 2. And then probably a very useful place for our customers is the support. We have our frequently asked questions here. We have different downloads like manuals and, and software here and also distributor support portal here. It contains, among other things, the high resolution images of, of Kuha products that you can feel free to use them on your, on your web pages. Uh, this is pretty much what I wanted to tell about Kuha Sono 2. Let me just put it here. And I think that at this point, I would like to go through your questions and, and answer them if I can. So let's go through those and feel free to still send your questions to that email address that you see here or the YouTube live chat. So what questions do we have? Okay, there are a few questions.